You are now listening to 15 Minutes of Fame Radio. Let's go! All right, man, 15 Minutes of Fame. Uh, happened to be at a, at a battle rap event running to my man, Lickety Split. Twice, twice. Twice. Right. So I said this time I had to make sure I get an interview with you because yeah. I know a little bit about your story and I don't think a lot of people know about your story. Yeah. And, and I thought it was a dope story. Yeah. Um, first, Lickety Split, you, you were in the movie uh, 8 Mile with Eminem. Well, Strike Money was in the movie with Eminem and playing a character, Lickety Split. Uh, the character name is Lickety Split in the movie. But right, for gotcha, the, for, gotcha. Yeah, but for the record, my name, and was my name, and still is to this day, is Strike Money. Strike, um, right. In, that's... Fact, in fact, in the movie, they use my name as one of the characters. When In the movie, they go, next on the stage, Strike coming up to the stage. Another battle rapper. Yeah, for ever. another battle rapper. Mm. They actually act, and they asked me, could they use my name for him? Right. Um, to use it for the for the battle rap. But yeah, definitely. I played the character Licky Split. In the one movie. thing I found now is that you said that M- or it, it's been said that Eminem actually wanted real motherfuckers in the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 no doubt. No so, doubt. and you were, you know, like you were a real, can yeah. I say, yeah. brother in the street doing your yeah. thing? Yeah, at that time right? I was, I was definitely in the streets. Uh, I was on, I was on the run from on the run? Right. A, my face was on TV, wanted by the FBI. Mm. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a crazy time at that time. At that, uh, yeah, could, doing doing shows and. Doing shows and fans coming in the front door. I'm running out the back door, jumping on the bus, laying down on the ground. Oh yeah, it was serious. So I thought it was interesting and dope that he actually, you know, some people they do a movie and they just go grab some actors and yada yada yada. But to actually have credible people in the movie just makes the movie that more, at least to me, more interesting now. Oh yeah, definitely. For, uh, then we have Makai Pfeiffer, Tim Basinger. Um, yeah, it was some real big heavyweights in the movie, and I think they wanted the character, my character, they wanted it from a street essence, a guy that was from Detroit. Right. It was actually that guy that was actually a part of that whole life, and at that time, you know, that's what my whole my whole life was. My whole life was crazy at that time. Again, I was on the run from, from the feds. Right. I was in shootouts, you know what I mean? It was, it was it was a real crazy time around that time. And you were a rapper. You was yeah, part yeah, of a yeah, rap yeah, group yeah, yeah, at the yeah. time. Yeah, I had a rap group, uh, so rap it all group, just uh, the mountain climbers, uh, me, journalist King Dave, uh, YG, definitely. You know what I mean? And then uh, we went our own ways, and then that's when I started doing the Strike Money brand. And what exactly was the Strike brand? The I mean, well, Strike Money is what. Everybody does every single day when you wake up. It's, it's the currency of life. When you look at the name Strike Money, it's what you're doing right now. When you go to work to go get that money, you're going to strike money. Like strike oil, strike gold. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So strike, strike the first the first part of that name, strike, is from the element of standing up for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Doing the right thing, standing up for my community. Um, I've always been that. Like I was a guy who got beat up by the bullies when I was little because the bullies would try to come over and take over shit and I'd, be, and I'd be the one standing up for myself. But of course, I was skinny and little, so I would always get beat up by the bullies. I had to, I, that, in fact, me getting beat up by the bullies is how I learned how to fight. You know what I mean? Because I had to fight growing up on the east side of Detroit. Right. So yeah, so Strike came from that. And I think when I went to California after the movie, um, my partner Damien, I walked in the studio one day and he was like, Strike Moolah. And then it just that it just stuck, and that was the brand. Fire, yeah, fire, and and it's dope. Uh, just a little more that you know you were part of a rap group. Um, you were a rapper. You were a real street dude. You know, and then you were casted to do this movie. Um, I also heard if it's all right if I say it, like the M bail you out or yeah, yeah, help yeah. bail you out no, for no, a situation. No, I, I, I was in. I was no, definitely M. Uh, shout out to Eminem, definitely forever. Me and M. Me and M will always be good. Um, uh, me and the powers that be maybe around them, you know what I'm saying? We trying to right. figure it out. But um, even even with them, it's nothing bad to say on camera. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. But um, definitely M came through, bailed me out. Um, I got caught, and Proof called me. It was like, yo. No, I called Proof. I was like, yo, they got me. He was like, damn. He, I was like, yo, come get me. He was like, he just spent like $245,000 on the house out on like 26 Mile Road. 
But me, I, again, I'm, I'm that nigga from the block. So I was like, yo, what the fuck you mean? Go, go call him. Like, him is a multi-millionaire. Right. This is our guy. This is our crew, right? I'm fucked up. Go call him. So he was like, he was like, oh yeah, what the fuck am I thinking? Call him. <laughs> Next day I was out. Fire. 10,000, bonded out. Fire. You know and, and shout out to him because M never asked me for that money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So to this day, I still owe it to him, but he never asked me for it. Nah, that's fine. You know what I mean? So it's like when people try to, when people try to get me to say something bad about him, I really, I can't, I, I would be a fool to say something bad about right. him. No, this wasn't mean? even about you looking, saying no, anything know, bad. I, know, I thought it was saying, dope that people, he did that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people be trying to get me to go, I mean, it is what it is on the politics in Detroit of how they feel about him and all that shit, but at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, I still got a lot of respect and love for him. No doubt, no doubt, and I respect that from you. And, and now, you know, again, I met you for the first time. Uh, it was a URL event, uh, and we're in your facility. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you got this whole big warehouse, whatever we want to yeah. call it, yeah. that's yours. You know, and I'm, I'm proud of you for that, brother, that you're a yeah. black man out here doing your thing. You know what I mean? Got your own thing. Yeah. And uh, tell me a little bit about where we're at right now. Well, where we're at right now is called the, uh, the Legendary Ford Event Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, connected to the Founders House is me and my partner, Natalie. We actually own the whole block. The with whole, our partner, Ray. Yeah, we own the whole whole block. I didn't know it was block. an extension back there. Oh, when yeah. I parked back there, oh, I was yeah. like, oh shit, that's part of this. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, we're getting ready to go, we're getting ready to build up apartments, condos, tech world, Silicon Valley, and across the street over our parking our structure. We're getting ready to go up with condos, apartments. Nice. That was one of my ideas. And, um, once, I, once we became one of the owners, um, first thing I said was like, yo, we're getting ready to go up. Um, so in fact, I'm meeting with the hedge fund today. Somebody from the hedge fund is coming here today to, to try to uh, get a lock in on my ideas for the tech world, Silicon Valley, and everything that we want to do here. Wow. But now I just grew from a from an artist to an executive. Yes. Still make music. I still make music. So I'm still an artist by nature, mm -hmm. but I'm an executive mogul now. So right. I just I just made that that caterpillar into the butterfly move. You know what I mean? When I like you still that. got all of those qualities, but now it looks better now because. I'm able to spread my wings now, help other artists out, uh, put my music on soundtracks, movies. I'm, I'm producing movies, TV shows. Um, I'm behind one of the biggest, one of the biggest uh, uh, cosmetic lines that's ready to come out. I mean, you know, um, it's really, really something amazing to see uh, with my wife, Miss Yella. Uh, follow Miss Yella on Instagram, um, M-Z-Y-E-L-L-A, -L -A, two A's on it. Um, she is amazing. Uh, my wife has a makeup line, 729 Cosmetics. I'm a private investor in it, but um, no, she's not anymore. Thing. Yeah, not anymore, right? right. But um, no, man, it's just, um, I just, I was able to grow into all type of things. So now we got the building, we got the event center. Uh, we've been having all type of people come here from all walks of life, from having weddings booked in here to having Spanish parties up in here to EDM concerts, R&B. Uh, we just did our first comedy taping. We'll be taping it live and putting it on the XOD network. So now, man, we shoot movies, everything here, man. We just, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity, great time to be alive. Just Good. finished right, co-writing and uh, co-directing Boosie's movie, Water Boys, coming out Labor Day. Heard about uh, that, yeah. yeah. Uh, just last, yesterday, just wrapped on the set with him. Um, so, now, man, it's a lot of great things that's happening. I'm, I'm happy for you, brother. Thank you. You know, and uh, this is just a testament to anybody who's watching this. Um, it's never over. Never. You can never. go through a lot of shit in yeah. life, man, and there's always a possibility, man, from the, the struggles that you went through growing up in the Detroit, going through the shit you went through, and then actually being where you're at right now, doing what you're doing. Oh, yeah, man. Definitely. It's possible. possible. Yeah, you know, here's the mm -hmm. thing. Like, everybody may not be Jay-Z. Right. But everybody could be a great businessman. That's right. Everybody may not be the next Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. But everybody could be a great businessman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think there's always room for that in America. You know what I mean? So, a fact. For, so for me, just to understand that, just to know that, and then God gives me an opportunity to where I can come back around the mountain now, you know what I'm saying? Once, you know, I profited, you know, we put four and a half million inside this building, you know what I mean? So we, we bet the farm so that we can own the farm. And now that we own the farm, you know what I'm saying? Do whatever we you got, want. We got the animals, we got the stock, we got the garden. We, you know, we, there's no more shopping at the grocery store now. You know what I'm saying? We 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 making our own military swords and ammo and you know what I mean? There's nice. no more going to buy uh, stuff from the from the gun store no more. We're doing everything in house. You nice. know what I mean? So I think uh, for me, I think that was the biggest thing that I learned in life is to grow from within self and trust in the process wherever God wants me to be. Because maybe it wasn't for me to be 
um, uh, the, 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 the greatest rapper. Maybe I would have lost my mind. Maybe I would have maybe misled myself. Maybe I would have got caught up into things that I shouldn't have got caught up in. Mm -hmm. So God kind of, I believe God saved me from things. And a lot of times we want something that's not really good for us. And we, don't, we stay away from something that's really, really good for us. I come to find out I, I was a great salesman. I was a great businessman. And I still do music. Right. You know what I mean, so it's still good. I'm still executive producing projects, working with CeeLo Green, working with Tone Trump, working with other artists, 41 KP, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, man, I'm just having a ball doing this shit, man. I saw this shit, uh, DJ Khaled always coming up with these quotables, and one that just stuck with me. He said, they didn't believe in us. Yeah. But God did. Yeah. That's <laughs> and that's that's life. You know, yeah. a lot of people won't believe in you. Yeah. You and God, it's all you really need to believe in you, and then you can get where you at. Yeah, no so, doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Definitely, yeah. man. Definitely. God is the one. You know yeah. what I'm saying? As long as you keep, I think a lot of times people lose the faith in God, because God already got it for you. It's there. It's, all, it's already, what's going to happen for you is already there. But then you can lose faith and then go on a whole other route. Facts. So nah, man, definitely I believe in that slogan. Um, I know your real name. Can I say your real name? Oh, yeah, definitely. Gerald Sanders. Gerald Lorenzo Sanders. Ger the third. Shoot it off. Yeah, the third. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate your time, brother. Lickety split from Eight Miles, Strike Moolah. Yeah. And uh Gerald Sanders, man. Thank yeah. you very much, yeah. uh, much, brother. I appreciate you. No doubt. Good shit. Man. All good. Fifteen minutes of fame. You are now listening to fifteen minutes of fame. Radio. Let's go!